everybody welcome to technique tuesday today we're going to be making a floating front vertical easel card sounds like a mouthful but it's such a pretty card it's worth it this is how it works of course it's you know obviously it'll be standing up but it's a vertical easel card quite often easel cards go they sit flat and the easel bit you know they, they lie down but this one actually stands up and is vertical and the floating front part of it is because this floats on the front I suppose I thought it was so cool I said right I have to make one of these for my Technic Tuesday people so let's get started we're going to take a piece of soft suede and it's eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter but it's also scored at two and one eighth so it doesn't so much fold back on itself as it folds in on itself and that's what makes the easel part there are quite a few eights in the measurements so as always of course there will be the measurements and the directions in the description box below but i just wanted to make you aware of it i don't want you to be thinking oh my goodness what what who what what lots of eights I almost wanted to go with 16s, but I thought, no, <laughs> we're not that desperate to make a card. So I'm going inside. It's going to be a piece of very vanilla. And because we want to have just the smallest border possible around, this is actually four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And the bit that makes the easel part is five and three eighths. It's one and a half scored at a half inch because you don't want it to be too big of a piece that sits inside but it does need to have a little bit of extra you know just the width of two pieces of cardstock really so I'm just going to stick oops stick that down onto itself and then when we attach it to what's going to become the inside of the card because it really needs to make sure it stays put. I'm going to use the tear and tape. I've just got a little edge on there, so I'm just gonna snip it off and make it even. So the edge where the easel part butts up against, it would be better if it was really secured down. So piece of tear and tape which I always cut as you know and then the inside of it I'm just going to use regular adhesive so the thicker part goes more towards the inside so it's what helps hold the easel part of it up so we'll just pop that on to the inside and then this was just a little strip of the designer series paper I had left over and I thought it would look quite pretty if I popped it down the side. This is the Rings of Love designer series paper, which was recently actually a celebration item that goes with the Ringed with Nature stamp set. But it's nice and it's fall and it's appropriate for the time of year. So that's the middle made with the edge. Another thing you might have noticed that I didn't do because I do like to bone fold and crease my folds. I didn't fold it. I want to try and have it be just slightly chunky. So we'll pop that over to one side for now. The next step is to put the layers on and I'm going to use crushed curry with an overlay of, again, the designer series paper. The crushed curry is two by five and three eighths and the designer series paper is five and a quarter by one and seven eighths so like I say there is a lot of eighths but it works best so we'll attach the designer series paper to the curry and it's just got the smallest little board around but I think it helps accentuate it brings out the yellow of the leaves Oops, this piece is a little bit too long. I don't know where I was going with that in my mind. Yeah. Hmm. Let me just grab the paper trimmer. Put it at five and seven eighths and slip it off. I 
carried away with all my eight. So now we've got the two pieces that are going to go on the easel part of the front. However, what makes it float is the fact that there are two little triangles underneath and they go under these layers before they get attached. So it's two pieces of two by two and then it's scored diagonally down the middle and fold into two nice triangles. And then again, because the floating element is going to be depending on this, I'm going to stick it onto the front of the card with the tear and tape. If I can find the end. Oh, little end. I saw a funny meme the other day where it was a lot of devils and they were trying to come up with bad ideas and it was just a roll of sticky tape that didn't actually have an end so that would be quite torturous so stick some tearing tape on which will help it stay in place okay and then quickly peel off the backing tape oops and we're going to pop them into place and then we can attach the layers to the front. So here is the front. We're going to attach them, sort of eyeball them into the middle. They want to go, honestly, a hair's, hair's breadth away from the fold, just so there's room for them to open against each other so the two sticky sides down this is where the floating part is going to attach so bearing in mind you need to keep these above the designer series paper small confession when i made the sample i put it down stuck the front on and then thought oh duh no piece to attach my floaty so i'm going to make sure they stay up out of the way Put adhesive on the layers for the front and then making sure we're not covering the mechanism just going to pop the two panels that we made onto the front Oops. and now we have the piece that we can attach it to and now we can go ahead and put the inside in And remembering that it's a really tiny layer all around, just put it into position. And now when the card opens, it has this to easel itself too. So now we're going to make the piece that floats on the front. So I've got a piece of soft suede cardstock, which is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And it just fits across the diagonal of it just fits across the front of the card and I cut out a leaf. I actually did it in so saffron rather than directly in the crushed curry because I wanted to sponge it and it just it's softer and the sponging shines through a little bit better I feel. So I'm just going to take a little bit of scrap paper so I don't ink up all of my work surface and I'm going to be using the crushed curry, pumpkin pie and poppy parade inks so i've got a sponge and i'm actually going to sponge the crushed curry on like i say it seems a bit odd to sponge crushed curry when i could have just cut it directly out of that but i wanted it to just be more of a sponged look than a flat out strong color so I just dab it and give it a good sponge so it's got a nice little bit of shading on it Next will come the pumpkin pie, and I'm actually going to use one of the little foam daubers. Just 
to dab it gently to get a little bit of colour on it, just building it up towards the edges of the leaf. And then last but not least, we're going to put a little bit of Poppy Parade around the very edges. Again, just using the, the dauber, just trying to catch the edges. So it has that sort of fall look to it. Actually, it's really quite pretty what comes out from underneath the negative version of what there is. So that's the sponging done. Then we're going to attach, I'm just going to pop that off to one side. We have to attach the, the base to this. And again, because it's floating, we are going to use more of the, where the heck is the end tearing tape. pieces on there <laughs> I shouldn't have made a joke about that because now it's going to haunt me isn't it because it's happening to me every time so little pieces of tear and tape which is, has such an easy end to find you try and write the wrong in the universe so pop the tear and tape on peel off the backing paper And then we're going to attach the brown triangle on it. It doesn't matter if it isn't even. What you really need to bear in mind the most is getting the points of the cardstock up the points of the card. So we'll pop one there and one there. And then when these are in place, then you can go ahead and press it down so when it moves it's going to float evenly and then we just need to decorate this, the leaf i used an old paper pumpkin set that happens to have a nice give thanks greeting in it i'm going to stamp on that with a little bit of the poppy parade ink In a position where I think I want the leaf to go and then stamp it so it's going to be square on the card and then the sample as you may have seen has a little linen bow on it so the old here's one I made earlier ploy I'm just going to attach that using one of the smaller glue dots so we'll pop that just a little bit down and because the glue dot is quite fat and the linen thread is quite skinny we can just scrunch that in a little bit and attach it where the knot is and you can't see the sticky from underneath and last but not least i am going to pop one of these lovely gold sequins on just to give it a little bit of extra bling and then pop a few dimensionals around the leaf basically is you know covered i don't think there's a space if you were to put a dimension on the edge of the leaf that it would overhang the brown but i'm just for safety's sake i'm just going to keep it a little bit inside but try and put one on each section. Peel them all off, make sure they're all the sticky side that you've got done. And then again, lining up the vertical of the leaf, just pop that into place. And ta-da, there you go. So it's easel, it's vertical for when you stand it up. It's got the floating front and I just think it is so pretty. If you would like, if you've liked what you've seen, please feel free to subscribe. If you press the bell, you'll get a notification when I have posted another video. And last but not least, thanks so much for watching.